Hey guys, it's Amy Dove, the Keto Queen. I'm so excited to be live with you guys. I took a break for a couple of days because I needed it. And I'll tell you a little bit about what's been going on with me this week, but I am so excited to be back live and to be feeling great. Guys, yesterday afternoon, I like felt like a, some kind of like relief <laughs> of stress and pressure, and it just felt so good yesterday to just chill out with the husband and go on date night. Guys, I'm so excited to be here with you. I hope you've had a great weekend. We're making a sweet treat. I've had so many people say, Amy, will you please make a sweet treat? And the reason I don't very often, guys, is because I want you to know how I eat and how I live. And I don't eat sweets that often. If I do, it is something that I cook that I can just eat one of and I have a whole cake in the house. So I thought this was a good idea. Every once in a while, I'll have a keto mug cake, which I love because you can just make one serving, be done with it. You don't have it stored anywhere. You can't sneak, sneak and eat it later tonight. Because guys, even if they're keto friendly sweeteners, they're still sweets. And for us to be successful in maintaining, then we have to watch how many of those sweet treats we have. So I'm in maintenance phase. I've lost all that I care to lose. And I've been maintaining for over two years, so that's why I don't personally eat sweet treats every day. But in the beginning phases, I 100% did, and you should uh, treat yourself and not feel deprived. So I'm going to show you how to make a sweet treat. Now this one is the first time I've made it, so I have no idea if it's going to be delicious or not. We will try. You guys know I'm always honest, so I'll tell you if you should just throw this recipe away. But it is going to be up in the post of this live video when we finish up the video. So also, when I'm making this, I want to show you how to calculate carbs to know how many carbs are in your uh, donut. So many times people will send me a message and say, how many carbs? Well, I can tell you how many carbs are in mine, but I can't tell you how many carbs are in yours because you may be using different ingredients. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So if donuts sound good to you, give me some hearts. Press share on the video and let's share with people how easy it is to live a keto lifestyle. Guys, I'm in my fourth year. I feel amazing. And yes, even though I'm a normal person who deals with stress and trauma and grief, I still can maintain this lifestyle because I feel so good. And that's the difference. Um, you can eat whatever you want to, whether you're keto or not, but you are feeding your body, whether you're feeding it good food that takes care of you and makes you feel good, or you're feeding your body something that's going to kill you, you are feeding your body. And in my fourth year keto, I can truly say that I have reached a place where I've truly learned and understand that I eat to live, not live to eat. And I hope that one day all of my friends out there will be here because this place is the most magnificent place I've ever been in my life. Okay, as a food addict, because you guys know I'm a food addict. So let's start off with some dry ingredients. I've got a big mixing bowl here. Probably don't need this big old bowl, but I've never made this before, so we're going to do it together. We're gonna start with our dry ingredients and the first dry ingredient is almond flour. You want you a good, fine, blanched almond flour and we're using a cup and a half. So guys, I'm you know I'm a fast talker. I cannot change that about myself. I'm a fast talker. If that turns you off, then it's okay. You're not gonna hurt my feelings by saying goodbye. It's okay, I can't be everybody's girl. But I always post the recipes in the post. So when this live is over, you're gonna have all of this information right there readily for you. But I'm a fast talker and I can't help it, that's who I am. <laughs> so I am gonna be talking fast through this and sharing lots of good information. Any questions you guys have about keto, put it in the comments because I will come back and read your comments later. And you guys probably will offer me suggestions and I won't see it until afterwards. And that's okay, I still learn from my friends too. <laughs> so the first dry ingredients is a cup and a half of almond flour. Now this is the one I use, it's just a Walmart brand. I buy cheap groceries because I want to eat affordably. So many people say that keto is so expensive and I'm like, no, it's not expensive. It just depends on what you want to eat. Now, if you love to eat steaks all the time like I do, then it can, it can ring up, okay? But it doesn't have to be expensive. So let me show you this Walmart almond flour and I want to show you how to read your carb count. So this is just a super fine blanched almond. I love this almond flour, nothing special to it, but the carb counts are so low. And guys, like I said, I can't tell you how many carbs are in your donuts because I don't know what you're using. This is my ingredient. I've got two tablespoons, okay, in a serving. So two tablespoons has one net carb. I've got three total carbs, two fibers, that is one net carb. So one carb and two tablespoons. That's how you add up the carbs in your almond flour. Now, I'm using, a cup and a half. Ricky just showed his finger. I, I, I talk expressively. <laughs> um, in my recipe with one and a half cup of almond flour, that brand, I've got two, I've got 24 tablespoons 
and I'm dividing that in half because there's two tablespoons in a serving. So that gives me 12 carbs. So I have 12 carbs just in the almond flour, okay? The next dry ingredient is coconut flour. And I've got a half a cup of coconut flour. I'm gonna show you my coconut flour, show you how to count the carbs in my coconut flour. Now yours may be different. So keep that in mind. This is just Arrowhead Meals. It's at Walmart. It's really inexpensive. I really love this almond flour because it tastes really good and I love it. Okay, I'm just showing you mine. Now let's look at my carb counts. Again, I've got two tablespoons in a serving. We've got six fibers and nine carbs. Okay, so six minus nine, what guys? Three. So I've got three net carbs in two tablespoons. So that's how you calculate to know your net carbs. Now let's see how many are in my ingredients. I've got a half a cup of coconut flour. Two tablespoons is the serving size. Now I've got eight tablespoons. So that equals 12 net carbs. So, so far, I've got 24 carbs just in my flours. Good news, this is where the carbs come from. <laughs> so we're almost done calculating carbs. All right, the next dry ingredient, huh? The next dry ingredient is my sweetener. I'm using a half a cup of Swerve. I'm using a confectioner because I like to use confectioner sugars when I'm making sweet treats because I just think the confectioner mixes better. That's just my first, my, my preference. You can use a granular if you want, if that's what you got the house, but I'm using Swerve Confectioner, and I'm using a half a cup. Now, I personally think you can go a little extra and do a little extra sweetener myself, because until you get used to the substitutes, it might not taste as sweet as regular sugar. But I'm going by the recipe, so I've got a half a cup of granular, no, I'm sorry, Confectioner Swerve. All right, and now we're gonna use some baking powder. We're mixing all of our dry ingredients first, guys. We're gonna use one and a half teaspoon of Bacon powder, because I can find my teaspoon here. Oh, yeah, I'm going to ask you. Yes. Here's one full teaspoon. How cold is it for? It's really cold. It's cold on my feet. And a half teaspoon. Yeah, so one and a half teaspoon. I can throw you in there. No. Yeah, ask him. No. Yeah, ask him. Tell him the thumbs up and get him like a 30 minute pool. Ricky wants to know how many thumbs up he can get if he throws me in the pool live. It's cold, guys. I'm really disappointed, too, because I don't want pool season to end already. All right, so we have one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and one more dry ingredient, and that is a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Now, I went to the grocery store earlier. I posted my grocery haul, and Ricky told me we had nutmeg. And then when I got home, I was like, there's no nutmeg. So Ricky got back in the car and went all the way to Walmart for me. Now, how sweet is that? Yes, all you haters out there talking about my hubby. He's an awesome man. All right, half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Now, I've never made this before. Again, guys, keep in mind, I didn't know nutmeg goes in donuts, but I don't cook donuts very often. So let me get me a little mixer. Have you I've never cooked donuts. <laughs> you don't cook donuts often. So we're doing uh, our dry ingredients. Let me go back to this and show you these recipes, uh, the ingredients again. I've got one and a half cup of almond flour. With my almond flour, it's 12 net carbs. We've got a half a cup of coconut flour. Again, with my coconut flour, we have another 12 carbs. So that's 24 net carbs so far. In a donut? Yeah, and not in a donut, in a recipe. Okay, and then we added one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. We added a half teaspoon of nutmeg, which smells funny, but that's what it calls for. And then we added a half a cup of sweetener. I used confectioner swerve. That's what I chose to use. And that's all of our dry ingredients. You know what I forgot to do? I need to do this real quick. Let me get some butter out. We need to go ahead and melt us um, one fourth cup of butter. Let me go do that real quick while we're mixing this up. I'll be right back. Fourth cup of butter. Excuse me a little bit. Excuse me. All right, fourth cup. Let me get a knife. All right, fourth cup. While this is melting, I want to tell you guys a little bit about my crazy week I had. Let's say a fourth cup is four tablespoons. That's one, two, three, four, it's half a block. I should know that by now, Lord of mercy. <laughs> so a half a block or a half a stick of butter we're going to melt. I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it up. What is it? I don't know what you got. Oh, it's a half a cup of juice. I'm going to see it. And you know you didn't say it. I got to 
in vain, you know. But I'm not, I'm not going to steal it. That's what it is. So Ricky asked me earlier, he said, so what kind of grease are you going to fry these in? I'm like, I'm not going to fry them. We're going to bake them in a little cute donut baking pan. Isn't that cute? <laughs> I got that at Walmart. And you can see there's just some little donuts. So I don't know for sure if I'm going to have a lot of leftover batter. And if I do, I'll just make two, two batches. Let's make sure it's melted. Alright, so I'm just uh, melting this butter. It's not completely melted, but it's hot, so the remaining will continue to melt. Definitely should have done this before we started because we don't want hot butter when we put this in here, but we want it melted and put to the side. So we're going to use this melted butter in a couple of minutes with our wet ingredients. Ready? So why don't we wait on this to cool off a second? You going to wait for it to cool off? Oh, hang on. Ricky's, got a, him, Ricky's making him a little treat over there. Um, close your ears. Go ahead, Ricky. He's using the blender. Okay, okay. All right. No, no. All right, so while we're waiting on this butter to melt or to, to pull off just a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and start getting my wet ingredients together and tell you a little bit about what was going on this week because I really had a rough week. And uh, I know I just got back from vacation, but I felt like I for sure needed some downtime <laughs> after this crazy week. Uh, always a blessing. I'm never, ever ungrateful for the blessings every week, but sometimes it's just uh, really hard and tough. So I know I've got some friends out there dealing with a lot worse than I had this week, but uh, my son was really sick this week. And as a mom, you know, that's very concerning always. Uh, my son hardly ever gets sick. I've been very blessed, knock on wood, with uh, good health in our family. So he definitely was sick and, you know, when your kid calls and tells you they don't feel good and they don't live with you anymore <laughs> and they're scared because they're sick because they don't get sick very often. You now, when somebody has chest pain at an early age, it's a scary thing, right? So my son was having some chest pain and some back pain and it just scared me. So I was stressed and crying a couple of days over that. And he wouldn't come home with his mommy. <laughs> yeah. So I just had to deal with that. And then, you know, my daughter, she is getting married. She is so excited. So we had stuff scheduled for the wedding uh, preparations. And I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about that at dinner time. So I'm so excited to share some stuff about that. And my sister-in-law had some stress she was dealing with. So I felt like I was a part of that too because I love my family. And one of my employees, our nurse practitioner, actually got hurt at work. So that was another added <laughs> pressure and stress. It was just one thing after another building up besides coming back from vacation and being way behind in work. So it was just a lot this week. So I really appreciate you guys caring enough to, to not be mad at me that I didn't come live uh, all week long, because I normally do. And I love to give you guys great tips all week long. All right, so I think this is melted and cooled off enough. We're gonna go ahead and start adding in our wet ingredients. We're gonna put them right into this dry batter. So my son is great today, guys, just so you know, he started feeling a lot better Thursday afternoon, Friday he was great, Saturday he was great, he wants to go back home, I mean, back to work and he can't, and yes, I know people are going to ask, so I'll just tell you, yes, he has COVID. Um, so I hate that, it happened, and um, I'm just glad that he's okay, but it was scary because he was scared, and it was very scary for me. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add in our melted butter. We've got a fourth cup, so half a stick of melted butter. We're going to add in three-fourths cup of sour cream. Three-fourths cup of sour cream straight into this dry mix. Uh, let's see. We're going to add a vanilla extract cap. So one teaspoon or a cap that I learned when I was 43 years old. That the cap of the vanilla extract is actually a serving. Never knew that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put this here, a little extract. And then we're gonna mix in eggs. So we're gonna use three eggs, but I'm only gonna put one in at a time so we can get our mixer out and mix those eggs in with the dry ingredients. So one teaspoon of vanilla extract. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and do two because I mean, here's adding flavor. 
All right, so the wet ingredients. We've got three-fourths cup of sour cream. The sour cream, guys, is where the next carb count comes into. So we have our almond flour, our coconut flour, and now I've got daisy sour cream. So on the sour cream, you'll see, and this is mine, the sour cream, again, is two tablespoons in a serving, and we've got one total carb. So one tablespoon, I mean, sorry, two tablespoons is one carb. So let's look at my notes over here because I wrote notes. In my recipe, I'm using three-fourths cup sour cream, so that's 12 tablespoons divided by two servings. That means six carbs. So right now, I have got, let's see, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Yes, I count on my fingers. 30 total carbs <laughs> in this recipe. So 30 carbs. Let's see how many donuts we're going to make with those 30 carbs, and then we'll know what the carb count is per donut. So guys, it's really easy. You just take your ingredients, and you add up the carbs in each of your ingredients, and then you divide it by the amount of food you're cooking. That's how you come up with your total carbs in your recipe. And I can tell you what mine is, but you have to look at your flours and your sour cream to decide how many you've got. Okay, this looks really good so far. As you can tell, it's starting to cake up like a little batter. We are going to go ahead and add in an egg. And we're going to do one egg at a time. Ooh, that flew across the room. One egg at a time. Eggs. All right, so here's one. Try not to put no shells in there. I've got my oven on 350 just so you guys know. And let me get a towel. Let me get my mixer. We're gonna mix one egg at a time. That is definitely not getting thin, like you would think a batter would be. Looks more like a thick cake. Again, it's the first time I'm cooking this, so we will see how it turns out. That's the second egg. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and put my third one, so I don't see any point in waiting. <laughs> I don't understand why it tells you to do that. It's not like you're putting six in there. Alright, we mix this last one. tells me to pipe this into my donuts because look it's kind of thick like a cake batter so it tells us to pipe it let me get me a, I got me a ziploc bag out because I don't have a pastry bag uh, I don't cook pastries very often at all if never <laughs> let me use my little spatula here we're gonna put all this into our ziploc bag mm. it smells good <laughs> I have no idea guys if this is gonna turn out good you saw my ingredients let me know if you have any suggestions Tastes good. It's like an old-fashioned donut. I do have an icing glaze. I'm fixing to go over with you to tell you how to make the icing glaze. I personally think I might add a little lemon to the glaze because that sounds really good to me. Uh, but let me tell you, let me get this in here and then we'll go over what the glaze recipe is. What we're going to do is pipe this into our donut pan. Now I've got two, oh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got nine little donuts. And this is, to me, this is like a little small donut pan. But if we have a lot left over, then we'll just make us two batches. And we're gonna bake this on 350 for about 25, 30 minutes. Um, we'll do the toothpick test to make sure the toothpick comes out clean. And if it does, it's good. We're just cooking it until it's done through. So if your oven cooks faster than mine, it may be done way before 25 minutes. Uh, but we're gonna put them in there for 20. I'm gonna do 20 minutes first, actually, just so I don't overcook them. I'll do the toothpick test at 20 minutes, and then we will cook it longer if we need to. Right, I'm going to cut a hole over here at this edge. Okay, that's one of those stupid bags that have the... All right, I'm going to cut it right there. Get some scissors. So my husband's usually, are be usually better at piping things, but we're going to do it. All right, so I've got nine little donut holes. 
I hope these are good being in my first time. So yeah, I cut, cut a really big hole. Did too much, oh well. <laughs> I might have to, uh, there we go. So it says in this recipe to fill these up pretty much to the fill line because these are not gonna rise very much at all. So I'm just gonna use my fingers to get down in there. You guys saw me wash my hands. They're my donuts, nobody's eating these but me. So I saw a lot of chocolate donut recipes that I would love to try. I thought for my first time I'd do this one because Ricky doesn't, he's not a big chocolate fan. I want to cook something we both could eat on tonight. Now you guys know if you follow my page, tonight starts our Keto Reboot. So I will actually be fasting in an extended fasting program uh, over the next couple of days. I still will be cooking. I'll be cooking for my husband and my daughter. Uh, but I will not be eating dinner on Monday or Tuesday night, even though I'm cooking. And it's pretty awesome that I can be in the kitchen <laughs> cooking dinner and not eating. But that is the power of ketones, guys. You know I love my ketones. Uh, our keto nat is amazing. So I'm going to be doing an extended fast. And I thought it was a perfect timing coming right off vacation to do a fast. So it was just perfect timing. Uh, it's not something I do every single month. I used to when I was in my weight loss phase. But now that I maintain, I probably do it once a quarter. Uh, I skipped several months and got back to doing it again. And man, I really missed it. I didn't realize how much I missed that program because it truly makes you feel amazing. Uh, guys, you know I do love my Keto Nat drinks. If you want information on Nat, just put it in the comments. I always suggest my friends start, uh, you know, to bust a plateau or to uh, get yourself a jump start or just to make your lifestyle so much easier and not have to focus so solely much on food. Uh, then the Keto Nat drinks are awesome for that. All right, I know I'm talking. I'm fixing to come and check out your comments. I just got to pipe these in first. So, I will be talking a little bit about our exciting news for my daughter. Uh, at dinner time, I'm going to come back in just a little, little while, a couple hours maybe. Uh, we're going to make some Tuscan shrimp tonight. I don't cook shrimp very often at all because my husband, mother, my husband's mother is Spanish. And she came from Spain where they had tons of seafood. So, she cooked shrimp a lot when Ricky was growing up. So, he is just like over seafood. <laughs> so, I rarely ever cook shrimp. And she makes the best shrimp ever. But he told me this morning that shrimp sounded good. So I'm like, oh, yes, we are going to have shrimp tonight for dinner then. Where's my hole? I think I've lost my hole. Here it is. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm making a mess here. Let me get these down the bottom. How in the world did I lose my hole? Here it is. <laughs> it definitely is a thick donut. And this is like a cakey donut. It's like an old-fashioned cakey donut. There's a lot of keto donut recipes out there, but I, I picked the one that I had the ingredients for. The only thing I had to buy today, and Rick had to go back for, is my nutmeg, and I had to buy some sour cream. So I had everything I needed for this recipe. That's why I decided to try this one first. All right, we're almost done. Lord have mercy. I'm gonna get it out of this bag. If you have a pastry bag, I'm sure it's much easier. I'll put a big hole in this thing instead of a small one. So this recipe, I definitely can tell I might have a little bit of extra batter left, but not a whole lot. Um, not enough that I'm probably going to make two batches. So I probably will waste the rest of this. Sorry. Or I can just put it in a muffin pan. I can make muffins count. I got some muffins. I just don't want to wash this and have to start all over again. I'm lazy like that. <laughs> There's not, I don't know. There might be a couple of donuts in here. I might, we'll just see. We'll see how many is left. Let me pipe this last one. I know I'm sorry. This is live. I can't speed it up. I can't cook, make it cook faster. I am going to come over there and see if you guys have any questions or need any help from me since I've missed you for the last couple of days live. Actually, it's been, Ricky told me last night in the bed, he's like, I can't believe you haven't done a live in like two or three days. I was like, I know. I miss my friends. But I just needed some re reset time. Whoops. Come on. All right, Ziploc bags are not my friend. I'm making a mess. Okay. I'm wearing this one. Good Lord. <laughs> I did spray my pan, just so you guys know, because I've never cooked it before. I didn't want it to stick, so I did spray with a little uh, spray. All right, that's good enough. All right, let me wash my hands. I'm coming.
All right, I'm gonna try to clean this paint up so it don't burn all over it. So again, these are the old fashioned cake donuts. There's a lot of donut recipes out there. I picked this one because I had all the ingredients except the nutmeg and sour cream, which I use sour cream all the time. So that's why I picked this one. So many out there, you can go to Pinterest and just search uh, keto donuts. Uh, go online and search keto donuts. You'll see uh, lots of different options. This is the first time I've cooked any, so I'm excited to try them out. And I will run back through the recipe again with you, but I really want to see if you guys have any questions for me. So this is how cute they are. I'll just go ahead and put this in. I got my oven on 350. <clears throat> All right, I set my timer for 20 minutes. So let me tell you what the icing recipe is while we sit down for a second and do a little chat. For the icing, uh, we're gonna use two tablespoons of butter. So we're gonna melt two tablespoons of butter and we're gonna add uh, a fourth teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of vanilla, two tablespoons of hot water after we mix the rest, a three-fourths cup of sweetener. So we're gonna do that uh, confectioner sweetener again and an eighth teaspoon of nutmeg. So let me tell that one more time. Eighth teaspoon of nutmeg, three-fourths cup of sweetener, two tablespoons of butter melted, a fourth teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of vanilla, and then we're gonna add three to four, one at a time, tablespoons of, of hot water to make sure it's the consistency we want. When these come out of the oven, we're gonna let them completely dry, dry. We're gonna let them completely cool off in the pan and make sure that at room temperature, and then I'll flip them over, and then we'll put them on a baking rack and then dip them in the icing, okay? So it's super easy, sounds like it anyway. We'll see how they come out. I will let you guys know honestly if they're any good or not. These are just old fashioned cake donuts. And I'm actually trying to decide if I wanna use um, a little bit of lemon in my icing. So that sounds really good, doesn't it? A little lemon icing on a uh, cake donut. It sounds really good. So I may leave, I don't know if I wanna add the nutmeg and the lemon or leave it out. Give me your suggestions, what do y'all think? Okay, let's see. Mary said her downfall is sweets, but I realize uh, it's the nasty sugar that kicks in. Yeah, it is Mary. And if you eat sweets, whether the keto sweets or not, sometimes it'll actually spike your insulin level and make you crave. So that's another reason why I don't have sweets a lot. Um, okay, Angie, thank you. I appreciate that. Angie, you are so right. I'm glad you agree. Sugar, not only sugar, but food, period, does 100% set your body off in motion, whether it's a good um, uh, feeling, a good feeding of the body or disease. Um, Oh no, Elizabeth says she's been doing this for about a month and shedding hair. That is not normal, Elizabeth. And I, most of the time, find that friends shed hair when they are afraid of protein. Like they're minimizing protein. They're trying to fill out this perfect little graph on an app and it says that they've had too much protein so they back off and they're not feeding their hair, skin, and nails with the protein we need. So I'm just curious if that's you, Elizabeth. Are you eating uh, good amounts of protein or are you focusing on uh, macros instead of carbs? Um, I'd love for you to send me a message and let me know what you think of the issue is. There's lots of vitamins out there you can get for your hair, skin, and nails, collagen, but honestly, uh, my beautician has told me over the years that my hair has gotten so much better. I had really thin, damaged hair from past bleaching and phenamine, <laughs> which almost killed me. Uh, and that's how, um, but anyway, she brags about my hair being so much better with keto. I don't know if hair loss is normal with keto, but my hair started looking damaged and shabby. Connie's saying the same thing. So Connie, I'm just curious, guys, keep in mind that protein is important. Uh, so many people are following those apps or macros and they're not eating enough protein, but definitely get you a collagen supplement and add that collagen to your day if you need to. Uh, I've just been very lucky and have had my hair restore uh, from keto. Now I am clean keto, so primarily I eat uh, uh, lean meats, low carb veggies with healthy fats. I don't eat a lot of packaged things. I, I don't eat a lot of things like I'm cooking today. <laughs> uh, but definitely get you a collagen supplement if you need that for your hair. Um, thank you, Carolyn. Uh oh, Connie says she's a nurse and she assures you that I eat plenty of protein. Good. I personally think it comes from drastic caloric change and that can absolutely do that. I don't know about the lady. Of the okay, yes. So Connie, thank you for bringing that up and that is so true as well. 
Uh, when you change your, uh, your lifestyle, your food habits, it definitely can make some shifts in your body. If you go from eating, you know, three or four or five times a day to eating one meal a day, it definitely sometimes can have an impact on your body and that can um, create some issues with your hair, just like anything else. So that is a great point, Connie. Thank you for putting that out there to everybody. Again, I would suggest you add a collagen uh, supplement uh, to your day until you get that uh, under control, but it definitely should um, it should not stay that way. It hasn't in my experience anyway. And most of the friends I do talk to are telling me they're not eating protein. Um, let's see. Uh, da -da -da. Thank you, Debbie. I appreciate that. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Missouri, great vacation. Glad you're back. Thanks, Brenda. I'm looking to see if you guys have any questions for me. Uh, Carolyn, I'm sorry you didn't get the front. We're making some donuts. We're making keto-friendly donuts, and tonight we're going to do a, a Tuscan shrimp. Uh, let's see. And we'll see if you guys have any questions for me real quick. I don't see a lot of them, so that's great. Thank you, Angie. I really appreciate that. Uh, da -da. Yes, Connie, he 100% is staying home until he fully recovers. I told him that he's just going to be bored for a little while because he's got to stay home until his time is up. Um, uh, da -da -da. Yes, I'll be posting this recipe, guys. Um, I see you have a nat ready to drink. Is that No, that's actually my sweet jam that was on the counter, Rosalyn. <laughs> um, I had that on the counter this morning and I decided to do it with a different flavor. Um, just checking you guys out to see if you have any questions. I definitely will be posting this recipe. Ooh, cinnamon would be good in that glaze, Carol. Uh, it does, but to each his own. I'm double vaccinated. Okay, I'm not even talking about vaccines, guys. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. I'm looking to see if you guys have any questions for me. I'm glad you guys have had a great weekend. It looks like you all have had a great weekend. Oh, no. Three friends back in November who passed away from COVID. I'm so sorry to hear that, Carol. Uh, it's definitely a scary, scary thing. Um, <laughs> I see Connie is saying she's not ready to fast. You 100% don't have to either. Don't ever feel like you guys have to do that. <laughs> um... Yay, Carol got a second box. Uh, we had a low country bowl last night. I ate only shrimp and two slices of pork chicken, smoked sausage. That sounds wonderful. All right, I'm just scrolling through, guys. I know. I'm just scrolling to see if you have any questions for me. I am going to go over this recipe one more time, but it is going to be in the post. Yes, everybody's saying add lemon. Thank you, guys. So should I add, keep the nutmeg in the, the glaze, too, the nutmeg and the lemon? No nutmeg, Mari says. Okay, thank y'all. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> um, anemia will cause hair loss too, I believe, Lori says. Connie says hers is thickening up. That's great. You know, we're all different. Don't ever, ever compare yourself to someone else because we all are different. We all have different health statuses when we start this journey. We all have different goals when we start this journey. We all have different uh, lifestyles. Um, don't compare yourself to everyone else. Just because someone else is having an issue doesn't mean you're going to. And just because you're having an issue now does not mean it won't reverse later. Guys, I hope you understand. And this is a true statement. I'm not a physician. I always say that I'm not a physician. But this lifestyle will 100% totally reverse insulin resistance if you're a type 2 diabetic or you're on that borderline so stay with this um, if you need that better health you want to stay with this keep it simple keep it clean keep it making sense um, uh, oh my goodness I'm so sorry to hear that Glenda so I'll tell you guys a long time ago a long time ago over 10 years ago I was using um, uh, phenamine you know I got on that phenamine bandwagon with the the diet doctors out there Sorry, I had some in my eye. And um, I lost a lot of hair. It never grew back. It never thickened up. I just have to, I'm dealing with it. I live with it. It is what it is. But keto has actually uh, created better hair for me, according to my uh, beautician, not just myself. Um, 
do I need to take ketones? You don't have to take ketones, Kim. That's a great question. Uh, these are not a requirement for sex success. They are just amazing. And I love them because, ooh, Steve says pumpkin roll time. Steve, I will tell you, my aunt makes a pretty damn mean keto pumpkin roll. <laughs> she sure does. But I'll have, uh, hopefully, we'll have pumpkin rolls this year, I swear. Uh, Yes, my husband's listening to football. I can't remember. Uh, Steve got me all tied up on pumpkin rolls. Keto Nat is not a requirement for success. I'm going back to that question, Kim. They are amazing. They help me phenomenal. They're just phenomenal. They help me so much because I'm a crazy busy woman under a lot of pressure and stress on a daily basis. They help me live an easier lifestyle. Uh, they make me, they keep me on track. I have so many friends who have had situations with stalls where they cannot move no matter what they do. And this has helped them tremendously. Uh, they're just amazing. I have some friends who will use them for a jump start. Some friends who will drink them, drink them for several months. I have some friends who have been drinking them a couple of years. Um, they're, they're there for you to use as an assistance. Tons of fat loss, tons of uh, focus, energy, appetite control. They're amazing drinks. Um, so is there another way of counting net carbs? Someone told me to also deduct any sugar alcohols. There are no sugar alcohols in these products I use today, Sue. And my recommendation are, is that if you're going to subtract sugar alcohols, my recommendation is you only subtract half. That way, when you're buying all these processed products that got 2,800 sugar alcohols, you're not subtracting all of that because there are things in that product uh, that are making them keto friendly. So my advice is always to subtract half the sugar alcohols. Mm, will you eat these donuts or giving them to my husband? I'm going to eat them, girl. <laughs> I'm going to eat these keto donuts and I'm going to share with my husband too. Um, what is the almond flour? I'm using just a Walmart brand. Let me show you. I've got just a Walmart Good Value. Walmart Good Value Super Fine Blanched Almond Flour. That's what I use. One carb per two tablespoons. Cheap and good. Now, there are a lot of good, tasty almond flours out there, but guys, you better look them carb counts because my mom used to use one that had like four carbs and a tablespoon where mine was one carb and two tablespoons. So just because you're using an almond flour or a coconut flour doesn't make it the best choice. So just look at your packages. You want to make sure you know what you're using. Uh, I know I wasn't a question just saying hi, I guess. Um, hey, Lynette, I'm not sure I'm, I might have missed that, but hello. <laughs> Do you like they did your granny? Yes, Janice, keep trying. Back off to half a package. Um, my surgery will be in two years in December and my hair has finally gotten thicker. Good job, Belle, I'm happy for you. You could also add a slice of cream cheese to your glaze to thicken it, that sounds good, Dee. Is there any set amount of protein you should have a day? Uh, I've always learned, uh, Suzanne, and this is not keto related, but I've always learned that a serving of protein is, you know, the palm of your hand is a good size of protein. Y'all saw my steak last night. I ate every bit of it. <laughs> but I've always heard that a serving is, you know, the size of your, your palm. Um, you shouldn't have just one serving of protein a day, though. So if you're eating one meal a day, you want to make sure that you're getting protein in somewhere. Um, so don't have one little size. You need more than that. Um, you can Google how much uh, protein uh, you should have on a daily basis for health. Um, I really don't know that information off the top of my head. Uh-oh, Kathy says she was in Facebook jail because she called that woman who said something about Ricky's beard. I didn't know you was in Facebook jail. Y'all don't go to Facebook jail on my behalf. <laughs> Kathy, I don't know what y'all said. See, I'm so glad that I don't see any, I see some negativity from people, but I don't know how in the world I missed that. Kathy, I'm so sorry. Don't go to Facebook jail ever again on my behalf. I want you to be here so I can show you some good stuff. <laughs> But thank you for, for taking up for me. People are rude out there, guys. You know what? You just have to love them, kill them with kindness, and move on about your business because they're just angry with themselves about something. There's unhappy people, and I don't like unhappy people. So um, it's okay, I promise. Carol said, let's help me with, this has helped her with, uh, with psoriasis and inflammation. Yes, it will so much. Carol is down 2 to 22 pounds. That's awesome. Post pumpkin roll of my aunt, Glenda. I will if she ever gives it to me, but she is so bad about writing down recipes. Uh, yes, Steve, it really is good. It doesn't it doesn't cook the same as a normal pumpkin roll, but it really is good. I really enjoyed it when she made me one. So if she makes me one, I'll bring you some. 
Um, what is the almond flour usually cost? This bag was like $14. Um, actually, this bag was $9 because it was a smaller bag. Uh, I was two a week ago. <laughs> Man, y'all killing me, Facebook jail. That's too funny. Do you have a recipe that makes pecans taste better? Hmm. I don't know. I don't use a lot of pecans, to be honest. Does almond flour have to be stored in their fridge? No, I keep mine in the in the cupboard or in the pantry. I got five minutes left over there, but something smells good. I was saying about football game. Oh, okay, the football game. Yeah, Ricky's in there watching football. He loves his football. I have no idea who he likes because I don't watch it. Um, it's a protein equals a deck of cards. There you go, Mary. That's a good size. Let's see. If we mad because we fat. <laughs> so funny don't be mad because you fat a uh, good idea on someone suggesting adding cream cheese is so good when you do I will be adding cinnamon instead of nutmeg if I had none like if I had done like you did thank you guys for the suggestions I sure appreciate that so yes I'm glad you brought that back up thank you Sue because I did not use all of my batter there's a little bit left over there and we made nine donuts so 30 divided by nine is how many guys that's what your net carbs are in these donuts was like 3.5 uh, a little less than 3.5 per donut so it's pretty good and i'm excited to have one when they're done um <laughs> okay all right i don't see any other questions i think i've gotten all the way down let's check out these donuts and see what they look like so far oh they look good oh sorry the heat got them Yummy, they look really good. And I still have five minutes left and I put them in there for 20 minutes just to test them out in 20 minutes. I'll do the toothpick test, but don't those look pretty? So what we're gonna do is we'll try the toothpick test in just a couple of minutes. And then when they come out clean with the toothpick, we're gonna make our icing. So let me go over that icing one more time. Actually, let me go over the donuts. So I'm uh, curious how these donuts turn out. Can't wait to see them. I will definitely let you know if they're any good. I promise you I will let you know because I don't want you cooking things that don't taste good. So in the donut mix, let's talk about that first. We had dry ingredients. I will have this in the, in the post, but we had one and a half cups of almond flour, a half cup of coconut flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, a half cup of sweetener. I used a confectioner swerve, a half teaspoon of nutmeg, and that was our dry ingredients. We mixed it all together. And then we added a fourth cup of melted butter, three-fourths cup of sour cream. We did a vanilla extract, three eggs, and we mixed that up with our hand mixer. And we got them in the oven. So we piped that into our donut pan. Uh, I've been cooking for mine for almost 20 minutes. I'll do the toothpick test, and then I will take them out and let them cool completely in the pan. Don't take them out of your pan according to the directions. Okay, after they've completely cooled to room temperature, I'm going to flip them out of the pan and we're gonna glaze them in this icing. The icing that I'm gonna use, cause I've been changing my mind thanks to y'all's advice, we're gonna do two tablespoons of butter, a fourth teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of vanilla or a whole cup of vanilla extracts what I'm gonna do, three fourths cup of sweetener, and I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do a cap of the lemon extract. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. And then we're going to mix that up and then we're gonna do uh, two, I'm sorry, three to four. So one tablespoon at a time of hot water and mix it until you get that glaze thickening you want. You want to be uh, thick enough that when you dip it, it settles and it should settle and create a crust on top of those. Yum, all right guys, they look good. I'm excited to try them. We will see, I got my pan at Walmart today. I need you here in a good place for me. All right, guys, I got all the way through the comments. I'm going to jump off here and go get a couple more laps in the backyard. I've got uh, 5,500 steps right now. I want to get a little more. And so I'm going to go jump in the backyard while these are cooling off. And then we will be back here a little while later. What time is it? It's 2.30. We'll be back here in a couple of few hours to do some dinner together. And I'm going to tell you all about my daughter's wedding venue. She is so excited. We have a date. We have a place. And now we're working on all the ins and outs all the other stuff it's gonna cost a fortune <laughs> but it's gonna be fun all right guys have an awesome one and i'll talk to you later bye